Hey folks, welcome to the channel. My name is Joe. Uh, we're going to be discussing various topics through the future on my new channel called The Lead Life Reloading. I um, want to give you a little bit of my background. Um, I have my certifications in forensics uh, when it comes to uh, specifically in interrogations, interviews, uh, as well as document examination, um, handwriting analysis, um, micro expression, so on and so forth. I've done that most of my adult life. Recently had a career change, um, which again um, entails um, keeping a high level of education and uh, recertification every couple of years mandated by the federal government, as well as state and local uh, mandates. Um, one of the things that I want to cover today in today's topic is going to be children and guns. Um, however, my next video is going to be covering lead, particularly the metal lead. Um, and the title of that video is going to be is is reloading killing you. And um, I'm going to bring in, in medical documentation um, as it relates to the topic uh, to have a serious discussion about how we're treating our own body and our loved ones uh, when it comes to lead and the exposure to lead as it relates to reloading and firearms in particular. Um, today's topic, again, we'll be covering children and guns and introduction of firearms in the household as well as uh, properly educating the youth as well as your own children, family, and loved ones on proper uh, range discipline, safety, firearms, optics. And we're going to go over the whole entire way I do it. Um, another part of my background is uh, for the past 12, 13, 14 years, I've been a range officer uh, working the weekends only. Um, and with that, I'm going to speak from experiences on the observations I've made and how I put this program together for my kids and my loved ones and how um, I train them and teach them on, on firearm um, safety, firearm basics, uh, even often to uh, advanced firearm fundamentals. Um, so one of the things that uh, I observed while working at the range was uh, folks would bring their, their children to the range uh, with brand new firearms still in the box that they just purchased five minutes before coming to the range and complete disarray um, on not being familiar with the firearm, not being familiar with the optics, not being familiar with the ammo to the point to where they purchased the wrong ammo that doesn't even go with that particular firearm. Range discipline, trigger discipline, um, proper targets, not knowing how to sight in, and not knowing the basic fundamentals to keep the day safe and fun. So we're going to go over that in detail. Um, so one of the things that I do and I find absolutely necessary is when making a firearm purchase, make the most practical purchase that you can make for that child. And what I mean by that is, as parents, and again, purely some from, from observation, um, it, it's gonna be really hard to get the buy-in and the fun from the child learning the sport if the firearm that you're purchasing is not practical for that child. And, and what I mean is, if you are buying a firearm for a 10-year-old, um, a 30-odd six, bolt gun or a seven millimeter magnum bolt gun is not going to be the best choice for that child they're not going to respect the recoil they're probably going to hate it by the end of the day um, they're probably not going to shoot it more than three or four times because their shoulder is going to be bothering them it's not going to be fun to shoot they're not going to have good trigger discipline they're going to be scared of the gun um, start off with a 22 long rifle is practical um, it's very fun to use very easy to use and once the child understands the basic fundamentals of a 22 long rifle from there as they progress and get older and they can physically handle large calibers you can graduate them into more powerful calibers so they can respect and understand the rifle as they get older um 
one of the things I do when teaching a child how to shoot for the very first time is classroom training. Um, I don't believe in buying a gun and going right to the range and throwing it on the table and, you know, uh, trial by fire. Um, mistakes are going to be made. Uh, the kid's probably not going to have fun. Does it work out in some instances? Yes. But w when you buy a firearm and bring it directly to the range, how do they understand the basic fundamentals if they've never shot a gun before? They don't know the physical characteristics of the gun. They don't know how to manipulate or operate it. They don't understand the, uh, the, the optics and, and so on and so forth. So the firearm manufacturer actually makes it easy for you uh, when teaching children how to shoot a firearm. Um, it comes with a manual. Uh, one of the things I'm a big proponent of is conducting field and classroom training in both the written and, and verbal um, uh, aspects. Now, from a written standpoint, um, the children, the child should have the manual of the firearm to include the manual of the optics to also include the manual of the, of the iron sights, field sights, open sights, whatever you want to call it, so that they understand the basic functionality of the firearm that they're about to shoot. So one of the things I do is I will place the firearm on the table at home and go through all aspects of that firearm and have an understanding of the parts of the firearm, how to load it, how to unload it, how to keep it safe, um, the optics, how to aim, mill radian, minutes of angle, show them how to adjust the scope, show them how to bore sight it, show them how to um, zero the rifle, even before even touching a bullet or even getting to the range. Um, and when I mean the basics of the firearm, I'm talking about the bolt, how it functions, how the safety selector functions, uh, the lower, the upper, the magazine, how to unload it, how to load it, how to unload and load a internal magazine, how to use the drop plate to unload it, how to use a tubular magazine if it's a shotgun, how to unload it safely. Um, understanding all aspects of the stock, whether you have an adjustable stock with an adjustable length and an adjustable comb height, how to make sure they have proper eye relief, making sure that you are mounting that scope with your child and understanding, have them understand what you're doing so you have proper eye relief and what eye relief is and what parallax is and what uh, windage dial does, what the elevation dial does. So again, all this type of training should be done prior to even going to the range. Um, as a range officer, there was nothing more frustrating to see a child uh, or, or someone, doesn't have to be a child, someone who's never shot a gun before come to the range and they have absolutely no idea what they're doing. They can't keep it on the paper. They can't unload it. They're very unsafe. They don't have any range discipline. They're pointing the gun at everybody. They're going to and from the rack, to and from the bench in an unsafe manner. They're sweeping everybody as they're moving that firearm. You don't want to do that. You want to have the basics nailed down before you get to the range. Um, so, Written and oral examination on range safety, firearm handling, optics, and uh, have a very good understanding of the particular range that you're going to and what their rules are. Um, if you're going to a particular range, you want to give them a call or check out their website and see if they have their range rules posted. And make sure you incorporate that into your safety and training prior to making that trip to the range. Um, I've seen a lot of folks come to the range and just embarrass themselves with uh, poor discipline, not understanding the range rules, not listening to the range officer and, and causing safety infractions, embarrassing themselves and putting others in, in, in jeopardy uh, in, in sa uh, uh, as far as safety is concerned with their uh, undisciplined uh, firearm handling. Um, one of the other things that you want to uh, discuss with your child or whoever you're bringing to the range is going to be the type of ammunition that you're going to be using. Um, more often than not, um, I do an extensive amount of reloading. I haven't, act, I haven't shot factory ammunition out of any of my firearms in probably 20 plus years. I reload extensively. No, I don't reload for 22 long rifle. 
but ha having that individual understand uh, the differences in velocity, point of impact, um, what that particular ammunition is designed for, whether it's for plinking, target practice, long range shooting, hunting, how, how that particular ammunition is going to respond to that rifling, how heavy the grain bullet is in reference to the rate of twist of the firearm. Um, again, these are all things that you should discuss. And the more educated someone is who doesn't know how to shoot and you buy them into it, they'll start to realize that it's just not a bunch of people just pulling the trigger and sending lead down range. It's a very involved science. Um, and once they start to understand and appreciate the sport, they'll have a that sh brand new shooter will have a better understanding and a buy in into the sport and realize that you have to have half a brain to actually do this sport and do it effectively and safely to achieve the goal. And that's another thing that you should be discussing with uh, the new shooter is what is the goal that you're trying to accomplish at that particular day at the range. Now, it could be trigger discipline, breathing discipline. It can be um, point of impact discipline. Uh, it could be uh, learning how to properly sight in a firearm, be it optics or open sights, iron sights, field sights, um, adjusting them. The goal of the day. You, you can't go and <clears throat> you can't go to work as a supervisor and expect your employees to accomplish a hundred different tasks. Uh, and be successful at it. In order to properly manage, you need to give someone two or three attainable tasks, let them attain it, and over time, you assign them more tasks. And as they become more comfortable in attaining these tasks, you assign them more tasks. And it's just the same exact thing when it comes to learning firearms for the first time. You can't expect all and, and, and get none of the result because that's unrealistic. Um, you have to give two or three items that are goals for that particular day to ensure a safe, comfortable, and fun day. At the end of the day, you still want to have fun. And we're gonna, we, you can do that if you properly train a new shooter into the sport. Um, one of the other things I wanted to uh, talk about is, is trigger discipline. Uh, often with new shooters, they're so nervous that all that nervousness translates into how they handle a firearm. Um, breathing and trigger discipline is critical when we're trying to shoot precise. And trigger discipline, breathing is also critical in helping the new shooter calm themselves down and show them there's nothing to be scared of when shooting a firearm. And that's why I go back to what I said previously was make sure you match the proper caliber firearm to the person that you're trying to teach. If, if, you, if you're just bringing somebody to the range for shock and awe and you're going to throw them behind a 50 cal bolt-action gun, have at it. They're probably never going to wind up shooting again if they're a new shooter. Or they're going to love it. You don't know how it plays out. But generally speaking, and the experience that I come from and the experience that I've had through numerous years of working at the range, you're not going to have good results. Um, I often see husbands and wives, boyfriends and girlfriends, fathers and sons, fathers and daughters, uh, daughters and uh, daughters and mothers. It's it's there's all kinds of combinations that I, I've seen at the range, and it's it's those individuals that take the proper time necessary to educate the new shooter on what the expectations are for the day. Translates into a very successful range day. Um, more often than not, I'll see individuals come down there, regular customers on a regular base, and they'll bring people with them various different people with them from time to time and you never see them again and the reasons behind that is because they don't know what the hell they're doing and they're not showing them basic functionality basic fundamentals what the expectations are i know i'm beating that topic to death but you have to set expectations when you're introducing a new shooter to the sport you have to um trigger discipline going back to trigger discipline um Nervous new shooters translates into horrible shooting. And not controlling your breathing and not controlling your trigger discipline, squeezing it the wrong way, pulling it the wrong way, jerking it the wrong way, translates into some really horrible groups, real, really horrible shooting downrange. 
And one of the things that I like to do when introducing a new shooter to the sport is get them excited about their point of impact. Um, I'm going to throw up a couple of pictures of my daughter um, shooting her brand new Ruger Precision Rimfire rifle that I recently purchased for her. Um, and we left that day with sub-minute of accuracy on her first day ever shooting a firearm. Um, and her excitement and her ability to shoot effectively and understand the firearm and understand what's necessary to be a, a good, productive, respectful um, shooter, that gave her the buy-in to want to do it again. And her excitement just... It got other uh, people at the range excited. She actually had a crowd of people around her watching her, other range officers, other customers, people I've known for years, people I haven't seen in years, all crowding around her, watching her shoot, and she's shooting under a half inch at 50 yards like it was nothing. And that hap that is because of the prior <coughs> training that she had before even going to the range and understanding her capabilities, trigger discipline, breathing, and so on and so forth, and it translated into a fun day. And now she's so excited that the next time we go to the range, she's only going to improve upon that. Does pe do people have bad day at the range? Listen, I go to the range, <clears throat> I could have a half a minute day <clears throat> when I'm shooting half minute of accuracy. And then there's some days I can't keep it underneath two inches, whether it's my eyes are bothering me or burning. I can't get comfortable behind the gun. It's too cold out. It's too hot out. I'm either sweating or my hands are freezing, whatever the case may be. However, a bad day at the range, as far as accuracy is concerned, accuracy is concerned, is always better than a good day at work. Because at least you're sitting behind a gun enjoying yourself and reinforcing those fundamentals. Um, <clears throat> I also wanted to discuss range discipline. And again, I know I've mentioned that previously about contacting the range, asking them if they have some documentation or some literature or something on their website where you can go to and look at the range rules. Um, you would need to incorporate those rules into your training program that you've designed for the new shooter or your child. Um, being a former range officer, it's so ingrained in me on how to uh, touch a firearm, um, how to move a firearm, when to shoot, when not to shoot, looking to your shooters to your left or your right, um, recognizing cues on mistakes that other people are making to make sure that you're safe as well as they are because there are some individuals at the range that shouldn't even be shooting at, they shouldn't even own firearms, they're so unsafe. But that's their, that's their God-given right and we need to recognize those failures in safety and, and bring that to the range officers attention so they can address it quickly, properly, and make the uh, uh, best recommendation for that individual and how to correct correct that, correct that behavior. Um, so again, let's, let's go all the way back to the beginning now. So we're talking about introducing new shooters, specifically children, to the sport. And we're also talking about um, incorporating best practices um, to and from the range and what the expectations are. Um, one of the things I also do is I will discuss um, at home how that trip to the range went. What can we build upon? What can we correct? What failures were identified? Um, what improvements have we made? Um, was the ammo sufficient for the firearm? The, 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 the gun not like this ammo? Did it like this ammo particularly? Did it not like... Um, being on sandbags, that like it better on a bipod? Was it better fully supported? Um, what shooting position were you most comfortable from? You have to engage and you have to solicit feedback from the shooter so that their next experience to the range, they can build upon more success and they get a better understanding of the sport. Um, one of the things I also see that folks make a lot of mistakes doing is using the wrong targets um, when introducing a new shooter to the sport. Now, what I mean by that is if you're going to be using iron sights or field sights or open sights or however you want to call it, you have to ensure that you're using the proper target. And I'm going to post some pictures about what I mean about proper target alignment and using the proper target for the proper aperture or optics that you're using. Um, 
I, I don't like when people shoot these gimmicky targets, uh, you know, balloons and, and cards. And I get that, and it's fun after you understand and have learned how to shoot. I, I get all that. Um, I used to shoot pennies at uh, 500 yards um, for a goof uh, because I was tired of shooting paper, so I just wanted to do something different. And with the pennies, I could always throw them on a necklace or a bracelet or something like that or or on some paracord and walk around and say, hey, look what I did at 500 yards. But those days are over. I'm not a two-year-old anymore. Um, how can you expect someone to shoot properly if the target that they're using isn't specifically used to sight in that particular rifle and or optics or field sights or iron sights or open sights. Um, those of you who have militarily trained, when you went and first year shot your first M16, do you remember the target that you used? Yes, it was specifically that paper target at 25 yards was used specifically so that you can zero in and understand how to get a battle sight zero and put three shots within a one inch group or I forgot the uh, the minimum standards for successful firearm um, zeroing on an M16. I'm not an AR guy. I'm a bolt guy. I do own ARs. That's not my specialty. Um, not that I'm not proficient in them. It's just not my cup of tea. I'm a, I'm a bolt guy. Um, so how can you expect someone to properly hold, line up their aperture, their reticle, their their bead sight, their iron sight, if the target that you're using is not designed for the sights that, that they're about to try and zero the rifle on. Folks, I'm trying to give you building blocks to introduce your kids or your wife or your husband or your daughter or your loved one or, or a close friend or whatever it is into the sport successfully. Um, and again, I'm speaking from years of watching the mistakes being made at the range of introducing new folks to the sport. And they're just, uh, there's no plan behind it. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason as to why they're making the mistakes and in introducing someone into a sport. And the person's never coming back with them. There's just so many failures that I've seen. And I tried to come up with something comprehensive um, that works for me. And this is the, also the same type of direction I give folks when I meet them at the range. And more often than not, when I'm working at the range, I have individuals that have come up to me nine times out of ten, and I'll have to take over with the training because the person that they're introducing to the sport is literally losing interest by the second. And they have absolutely no idea what's going on. And from there, we have to start with the basics and go back. Um... Assigning homework. I know it sounds dumb. I know it sounds crazy, but assigning homework. Go home, sit down, grab a piece of paper. What are the successes of the day? Write them down. What are the failures of the day? Write them down. Was there a misfeed? Was there a jam? Was there something about a particular piece of ammo or particular type of ammo that wasn't firing well. Was it firing well? Why was it firing well? Did you write down the velocity? Did you write down the weight of the, of the bullet? Did you take all these notes while you were at the range and then bring them home and review everything so that way the next trip out to the range is even more successful? Homework to me is imperative. And I'm going to put up a couple of pictures of some of the homework that I assign um, to shooters that I've seen at the range. And I'll actually walk around with a paper and pen and I'll write down observations that I've made. And, you know, hey, uh, my name is so-and-so. This is what I observed today. Um, you know, if you want to work on these couple of things, I think you'll be a better shooter and have more success coming back to the range. And I'll also do that for some of the new reloaders that I have coming to the range. And, <clears throat> and again, I have 20 plus years extensive uh, reloading experience um, on several different calibers, including handguns and shotgun and, and precision firearm. And, I, and I'll write down notes and they'll ask me, hey, Joe, how do I do this? And how do I do that? And what have you noticed here? I don't have all the answers. I'm not an expert on anything. I'm just speaking purely from life experiences and what I've had to teach myself through trial and error. Um, so we've talked about expectations to and from the range. Um, 
that's pretty critical when you're trying to show someone the proper way to handle a firearm. Um, one of the things that I always recommend, and, and, and I do it for myself, is when you buy a new firearm, have a data book um, to include shots fired that day, how many shots fired that day, the life of the barrel, what ammunition you use, the date, the time, the weather conditions, and you also want to bring home the targets. Now, what I do with my targets is I use a three-hole puncher, and I categorize it by caliber, and I have a loose-leaf binder, and I put all my targets in the binder. And again, that's another way of getting the buy-in from the shooter. Um and realizing that um, once they take a personal interest in how that firearm operates and their own achievements and failures, it's only going to push them to do better. Um, and I recommend you do that. And you've got to encourage the input and the output from the shooter that you're trying to train. Um, you know, that's all I really have today as far as what I wanted to discuss. Um, Slow down when you're trying to show someone how to shoot. Start at home. Start with the basics. Make sure that that firearm matches the person that you're trying to shoot. You're not going to hand a 90-year-old woman or a 90-year-old man a 10-gauge shotgun and go skeet shooting for the first time. It, 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 you just don't do that. Um, 410 at best. Um, you're not going to hand a 10-year-old uh, you know, a 300 Winchester short magnum and expect them to have fun with it. Um, gradually graduate them from caliber to caliber and as they graduate they're going to have an understanding of what to expect as they move up from a larger caliber from a smaller caliber and so on and so forth um, a lot of folks don't like 22 long, long rifle because if the child doesn't like shooting they're stuck with a 22 long rifle you know what that's the price that you pay um for improper instruction on trying to get someone involved into the sport. Um, I appreciate your time. Hopefully this might have helped you a little bit. Um, input is greatly welcomed. Um, folks, all I ask is if you have nothing good to say, don't say anything at all. Um, my kids, my family, and, and those who follow me read my comments. And... Um, any positive input would be appreciated. Um, keep all the negative comments to yourself, all right? I'm trying to make this more of a family channel, getting the whole family involved in the sport. Um, I'm not looking for people that are uh, tactical, making ridiculous comments on my channel. With that being said, um, I appreciate your time. Let me know if I can do anything for you. I can send you some of the exams that I've written up. Um, I can give you a more in-depth overview of how I go through the training and what the expectations are um, when it comes to trigger discipline, breathing discipline, optics, iron sights, field sights, whatever you want to call them. Um, we can go through that in depth. Again, thanks for your time. This is The Lead Life Reloading, signing off.